joining us now, Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Congresswoman, we're so sorry about what's going on in your state of Florida. Your take on this. I mean, energy is so important now for your home state of Florida. But this is about getting more supply. Where, where, what's your take on what's going on? Well, thanks for having me back, Liz, and thank you for your thoughts and prayers and everyone for our, our home state of Florida. It's a tragedy, truly. But, you know, all I keep hearing out of this administration is more political doublespeak. It's, they, they seem to think that just the same way that money uh, magically appears in, in this administration off of the money tree that they just keep spending to the tune of $8 trillion, they're doing the exact same thing with energy. If we are going to rebuild, and when I say rebuild, we are going to have to actually rebuild Fort Myers, Naples. Uh, Southwest Florida has been totally devastated. We're seeing effects all across the state. We need to have energy. But this administration's assault on our domestic energy production has absolutely crippled us. We're still seeing an average gas price of $6 a gallon in California. And to insinuate that there's going to be price gouging, that would have to be at the most hyper-local level. And again, they seem to lack a basic understanding of economics. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, oil pros warned gas and oil prices about to go up again because of supply depletion and tight supplies. The oil yes. pros are saying at the current rate, the White House is selling more oil out of the strategic reserves than the production of most medium-sized OPEC countries like Algeria or Angola. We're selling twice as much per day than we're producing out of Alaska. Let's listen to Edward Lawrence here take this on down in Washington. Watch this. Uh, so in the aftermath, uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at the lowest level since 37 years, and you said you've set aside some, some gas for Florida. Is there a concern that the reserve is not high enough now to handle the aftermath of this emergency and other hurricanes that could come? Um, I don't have any concerns at this point that we're going to have the ability to handle the, the fuel needs that we're going to need in Florida. We will continue to assess after the storm passes to see what the impacts are. We'll make sure that we're putting measures in place to support any, any gaps that we might and identify. The season, you think you're Covered. It all depends on what the impacts from this storm might bring, um, and so we need to do those assessments after the storm passes. What do you think, Congresswoman? It just blows my mind, Liz. You know, this the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at its lowest rate since 1984. I was born in 1988. If that gives you any indication that this is absolutely wild what we are seeing. This is absolutely unacceptable. It's a national security concern. And the fact that we continue to release oil at a time when Americans are struggling and we're heading into winter and fuel costs are going to go up, now we have a major natural disaster on our shores. This is ludicrous. So what happens? I don't understand. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, Tim Stewart, the head of the U.S. Oil and Gas Association, he's saying this is the first time in history that the Strategic Reserve uh, has been used as a campaign credit card to buy down yes. political risk in the midterms. That's what he's saying. That we this is for hurricanes. It's not for bad poll numbers. Absolutely. No, he's 100 percent correct. We're six weeks out from a midterm election in which across the board, Democrats are losing. So they're trying to buy goodwill and favor with voters in anticipation of a total red wave. And they're doing it at the expense of our national security. So I couldn't agree more that this move, reducing the amount that we have in our strategic petroleum reserve, it's nothing more than a campaign antic to get people to say that they're actually doing something. But as we know, this administration has created these crises one at a time, and they have fumbled the ball every step of the way. Congresswoman, they can't be trusted. What does your state need right now? What does it need from the federal government right now? So right now, I have to say that the coordination between the federal, state, and local level has been incredible. Governor Ron DeSantis has been leading the charge every step of the way. At this point, now that the storm has actually passed, we still have to be aware that the flooding that's going to occur in the next few days and weeks as the storm surge keeps coming up the intercoastal and beyond, we are going to still have effects. We need to get our grid back in place. We need to get the basics and we need to find uh, housing for people who have been displaced. Congresswoman Kamek will be with you in Florida every Thank step you. of the way covering the story. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's it's good to Thank have you, you on.